Hello and welcome to At Brookings. I'm Gigi Hinton. As the nation rebounds from the recession, the air travel industry is making strides as well, but not without a host of problems. A new report from the Metropolitan Policy Program offers recommendations on ways to manage air travel trends. And immigration policy is a key item on President Obama's agenda. We'll hear from a panel of experts as they review the findings of a new Brookings Duke Immigration Policy Roundtable report. And is the man on the street concerned about swine flu? Well, he'll let us know. All that's next at Brookings. This is At Brookings, a review of news and events for the week of October 5th, 2009. As the economy recovers, the nation's air travel system will experience more stress with runway congestion, flight delays, and an increase in the number of passengers, especially on short-haul flights, as fellow Robert Puentes explains. It's high time for this country to recognize that these metropolitan areas really are these hubs of domestic commerce and travel, and policies need to recognize that. So the airport improvement program, for example, only sends about 37% of the money to these top 100 metro areas, even though... 99% of travel occurs through these 100 largest metro areas. We need to align policy better with the reality of, of travel. Am I worried about the swine flu epidemic? No, I'm really not. I myself have never had a flu shot. I'm 73 years old. I think it's a very serious problem right now. I'm thinking it's not a lot worse than, than the previous types of flus. I've actually heard that if the, if, if the flu is caught that it can be uh, less dangerous and have less perilous consequences health related uh, than the normal flu. I think that it's a little bit wrong for the authorities to put this panic into us. And that's pretty much what I think. The Brookings Duke Immigration Policy Roundtable released a study recommending a half dozen key policy changes that it says will help facilitate immigration reform. Governance Studies Senior Fellow William Gostin chaired a panel discussion on the findings, saying the issue has deep roots here in the states. We could, in, in fact, tell much of Americans, America's story through the prism of successive waves of immigration over the past two centuries and the social and political controversies that they've sparked. The stakes are very high. And in this context, we may be dismayed, but I think we should not be overly surprised at the high ratio of heat to light in the debates of recent years. The problem is that our system right now to deal with assimilating and integrating immigrants is makeshift. It's divided in a variety of different ways. There's no real bully pulpit for it. There's no coordination amongst agencies at federal, state, local, or with civil society. We say we want people to become Americans, but we really do not have an intentionality behind our policies. And even worse, it's not simply makeshift, it's divided. We know that family-based immigrants' incomes grow faster than employment-based immigrants. We know that family-based immigrants are highly entrepreneurial. We know that family-based immigration means that you have a social network, that you have psychological support, that you have family members to rely on, and that you integrate faster because you have your family here. At Brookings is produced by the Brookings Institution. To learn more about the issues discussed on At Brookings, visit our website at brookings.edu.